Welcome to Happy Stitching from Magic Hour Cross Stitch Supplies. I'm Donna Murphy. This is my daughter behind the camera, Serena Murphy, and we are doing a series of videos to help beginner cross stitchers get ready for their first project. So the first video that we're doing in this series is uh, just an introduction to the necessary tools and accessories and the added optional tools and accessories. And the part of the wonderful craft that we love is the optional accessories because there's they come in so many different sizes, kinds, shapes, functions, and colors. And it's all about the color for us. So we're going to get started right now. The first thing you need to have for a cross stitch project, of course, is a cross stitch pattern. So this is a basic cross stitch pattern. This is what a project that we're going to be doing together to get started. We're going to work on this one and groovy. The essential information for your project is all on your pattern. It's in the, this page is called the legend. Sometimes it'll be more than one page. And it'll have all the list of flosses that you need and the numbers so you know which ones to grab. It'll have the dimensions of the uh, stitching. So you need to use that to figure out how big of a piece of fabric that you need. So we're going to do that calculation. It's not a big deal. It's not a scary calculation. It's very, very simple, but we're doing it in another video. So we have a pattern. And once you have your pattern, then you can select your flosses. Now the flosses, as I said, are all listed there. And I like to collect them for each uh, project in a small project box. So here I have them nicely numbered uh, numerically, so they're easy to find and just pluck out the one that I need. And it also has some convenient little uh, pockets for uh, little bits and pieces that you may need. The next thing that you need once you have your pattern and your floss is you will need to choose fabric. Now the beginners almost often start on Ada. An Ada cloth is 100% uh, cotton and it's weave, the weave is such that the holes are very visible and it makes it easy to stitch. It's necessary that it be a square weave. That means that there's an equal number of stitches vertically as there are horizontally. So uh, the count of the fabric is what will tell you how many stitches that is. For example, this is uh, 18 count fabric. So there are 18 holes or stitches per inch of fabric. This is my current personal project. Uh, it's a door sign. Uh, which, uh, we can show you a picture of what the finished project will look like. And I just got started on that one, so I'm excited to get working on that. I chose an 18 count fabric because I want the finished project to be a little smaller. If it was 14 count, it would be bigger because there are fewer stitches in an inch of fabric. So of course it takes more inches of fabric to do a designated number of stitches. The higher the number of in the count of fabric, the finer the fabric is. So as, uh, this is, I just chose a nice white fabric because it's a full coverage piece. In other words, the entire square of the design is filled with stitches. That's not always the case. For a pinwheel, pattern is not full coverage, such as pinwheel and groovy, then you could choose uh, a nice hand dyed fabric. For my pinwheel project, I'm going to use this uh, lovely purple one. So I have it all ready to begin, as you can see. And to check and see if I made a good choice on, on fabric, because you want to match your fabric to your pattern and your, your colors. So you can just have a look in your box and match it up with your fabric and see if those colors go well together. And I think they look great. It's going to be a really pretty pat pat pattern. And I've done the same with Groovy. But for illustration purposes, because this is an 18 count and I want everybody to be able to see the stitches and things as I'm doing them. So I also have some 14 count fabric uh, prepared for illustration purposes. We're going to be doing another video uh, more about how to choose a fabric and how, how to know what size, etc. that you need. So in another video, 
So we will uh, look more at that later. I do have a few more examples of hand dyed fabrics. They can come in all sizes. You have a small one, a little tiny one, if you want to do like a little decoration, an ornament, or you know, just something real small and quick, a, a greeting card, for instance. And there are that's a 14 count. Then you have a 16 count. This is another 16. And they, as I said, they come small, medium, and then they some of them are really large. So that's a really big one. That would be a nice fabric for like one of those Mirabilia mermaids or something like that. That would look great on that. So there's all kinds of hand dyed fabrics. These are just a few from my shop, but I wanted to just show you the variety available. So as I've mentioned before, the fabrics can come in different counts. And uh, we were going to show you the difference between 14 count with the bigger holes and bigger stitches. And then there's the medium 16 count. And then there's the much finer 18 count. So all of these are good choices for a first project. Uh, these the 14 count works really well. So we're going, that's why I chose that for illustration. So we have our pattern our floss, our fabric. The last thing we need, well, after the glasses that I need, are the needles. So uh, you can choose different needles. There are some tiny ones and some bigger ones. And usually your choice of needles will depend on your choice of fabric. So a finer fabric, of course, will need a finer needle. And those needles will work the same way as the fabric. The higher the number, the finer the needle. So for a 18 count, or there's 20, 22 count Ada even, and some of the finer fabrics of Luganas and Minens and that, uh, you'll often find very fine needles to work with, with those. And you will want to uh, match your needle to the fabric, but it's not that big a deal if you pick the wrong needle. No, it's, there's really no, uh, no really bad consequences or anything. The only thing is if your needle is too big for a very fine fabric, it'll leave bigger holes. But uh, for some types of floss, that's not a bad thing. So, but we'll get more into that in another video. And that with the scissors, just a basic pair of little snips from the dollar shop even, uh, that is your essential equipment. So with that, those things only, you can do wonderful things and create a, a really beautiful cross-stitch uh, project. So the next thing would be to look at optional accessories. And some people will consider some of these essential and some are, some may even think some of these are optional. Some people stitch without a pattern, they just make it up as they go along. So kudos to you, but I like to have a pattern. So some of the things that are optional for your uh, stitching uh, project would be something that I find absolutely essential is the highlighters. I like to high, you need to be able to keep track of your stitches somehow. So uh, how I do it is I use the two highlighter methods. So the stitches that I want to do are in yellow. And then as I stitch them, I cover it with pink and then I know which ones have been done and which ones haven't. And that, for me, is the easy way to do it and it helps me not to make mistakes. So I, I always stitch with these very handy. These particular ones are really good because they have a flexible tip and you can, uh, they just fit nicely in the little squares of the pattern, so I love that. Another thing that many people would say is essential are the holders, so a hoop, or a Q-snap. These are both really good choices and it's really up down to personal preference. You've probably seen a, a, an embroidery hoop in action, um, TV, movies and such. So the Q-snap works the same but it's square and it, it doesn't clamp in the same way. You've got four clamps and you just put your fabric. This again is my current project. We're going to get to this little doodad in a minute. And you just put the first clamp on, and then you can tighten it on the bottom. And then the second two, just put them on like that, rotate them outward, 
and now I have a nice firm uh, tight stitching surface and that's very helpful for keeping your tension right because you want your tension to be consistent with all of your stitches. Uh, they, a lot of people will um, have bigger, smaller cue snaps. Same with the hoops, they come in all, all different sizes, but it is, it is a good idea to take it off at the end of the day so your fabric doesn't get marked up. Uh, it, it comes out, there's no, no problem with that, but when, when you're, you've got a bigger project and the clamps actually cover up some of the stitches, then you'll want to make sure you take it out because it will crush the stitches and then it changes how they look. You could probably bring it back, but you know, why not not do that in the first place? And another thing that an accessory that um, are, is very valuable is known as a grime guard. So the, as you're stitching, you're handling your, your uh, fabric and your, your cue snap for a long time and inevitably, there is transfer of skin oils and whatever's on your hand gets on your fabric. So a grime guard just slips right over the cue snap or hoop. They, they come in size for hoops too. And again, we have these in our shop. And it just goes on there and protects your fabric from, uh, from the dirt on your hands. So even though your hands are clean and you wash your hands before you stitch every time, there, if you're stitching for a long time, there will be skin oils that transfer, especially on a big project that takes a long time to stitch. So this is one of those particular is uh, really nice and soft on the hands. It's made of flannelette, and they, they are uh, very handy to have, and they come in all kinds of pretty colors and stuff, so easy to install, easy to take off, very useful to have. And again, to take it, the clamps off, you can just slide them right off. My cue snap is a little older, so the clamps just can come right off. But even if they're really tight, they can slide off easily, so it's very helpful that way. And don't lose your clamps, because they're expensive to replace. You can't buy just one clamp, I'll tell you that. You have to buy the whole set. So put them back on your cue snap when you're not using them. Another uh, very handy tool that I use with every project is this little doodad. It's called a needle minder, and it actually is not attached. It can slide around. It's a pair of magnets. So there's one on the front and one on the back. So it holds my needle when I want my hands free. If I need to get another piece of thread out or if I want to answer the phone or whatever, I don't have to worry about where I'm sticking the needle. I've found too many in my shirt and in the laundry and I, when I started using needle minder, no more. And I don't lose the needle anymore, they just stick right on there. The, the ones in our shop have very good strong magnets so that you don't uh, lose your needle and it's always handy. And the, because it's coated, we treat the magnets so they're very smooth and they can just slide around from place to place on your project to be out of the way and they, they don't get in the way, they're uh, really a good thing to have on them. That's called a needle minder. The next thing that we uh, might want to have for our uh, for stitching projects is this. This is an ort jar. An ort is just the little bits of thread left at the end of your skein or your length of stitching thread. And I, you just put it in a jar rather than, you know, um, put it on a piece of tape or whatever. Uh, this is handy to just keep around and that keeps them together so they're not all over the house. Remember that orts can be dangerous for cats. If you have a cat, they seem to really love these. And if they start eating them, then it's a trip to the vet. So watch out for that. And also don't leave them out for the baby birds. Uh, you're not doing them a favor. The Cornell Institute of Ornithology says that they are very dangerous to baby birds, in fact, and unless the lengths are a half an inch or shorter, they can actually wrap around the tiny, tiny little limbs that they have when they come out of the egg and it will uh, inhibit their growth. So be careful not to leave them out for baby birds, but instead you can get a clear uh, an, an ornament 
Christmas ornament and just keep putting them in there once you, your jar gets full and then hang it up on the tree as a record of your year's stitching. A lot of people do that. I don't save them for anything. I This is a repurposed spice jar. I just fill this up. When it's full, I throw it in the garbage. So some people save them, some people don't. Let's look at some of the other handy tools that we have here. Uh, th these are marker pens. They're water erase markers. So you can mark up your fabric and then when you don't need the marks anymore when you're finished the project you take cold water and you can erase the marks that's very very handy to have when you're stitching and when you're cutting your fabric they're useful in a lot of ways they do have some ins and outs and pros and cons so there will be a video on that subject so uh, re watch that before you start marking up your fabric there's also lots of kinds of floss. So this I'm using all, this is all six strand, regular six strand uh, cotton floss that is uh, all that there is in pinwheel. This is just one example. But look at all the goodies that there could be. This, this is also six strand cotton floss, but it's called Variations. This one is an anchor product, but DMC, lots of different companies have them. So you can see there's a range of colors. So it goes dark, medium, light, pink, and then varies back and forth over a length of thread. So it's really fun to stitch with, and it gives a beautiful result. There's also a metallic range of flosses. This is a DMC product. And the number, it, this says E310. 310 is DMC's number for black. So this is E310. That means it's metallic or light effects is their brand. Uh, so that means it's a metallic black. So the, I, you can substitute your regular black for metallic black or any of the other colors uh, anytime you want. Nobody can tell you what your project is. You get to do it yourself. But the uh, metallic can be difficult to work with. We will be doing uh, a whips and tips video on handling metallic floss. So that'll help you um, get past the difficulties and get to the enjoyment of the using and the, the shiny effect that it has on your, on your pattern. And then another way to get that is with satin floss. And these will have an S designation in the DMC line. So S, satin. And the number again will correspond to this exact color in the regular cotton floss. So the uh, satin again will give a nice beautiful sheen to your stitching, especially if it's used in a fairly large patch, like you know a, a patch of dress or whatever flowers or whatever you're stitching. It comes in quite a good range of colors, and the uh, satin is really pretty on your project. Now, and the there's ways to store and uh, manage your floss. So they come in skeins like this. Uh, most people would take that skein, unwind it, and wind it onto a bobbin. This is a, just a plastic bobbin. You can also use paper ones. We'll talk about that again in another video. And then you end up with something like that. And then they fit in the little box. So they, without that, it's, I find it hard to use that. But some people just put them in little bags like this, floss bags. Floss Away is the brand most people use. This is just a little craft bag from, from Dollarama. Uh, and this is a metallic thread. So I've put a little square of dryer sheet in there to uh, help with the static electricity that I mentioned before. And that seems to be a really big factor in helping that to be a little more manageable. Besides the, those regular kinds, metallic can also come on a little spool. I, uh, mostly gold and silver you find on the spool, but there's other colors. I have a variegated bit. It's really pretty. There's also the Krennix. The Krennic colors that come on little spools like this. They come as a metallic stitching thread, but they also come as a blending filament, which you take one strand of that and replace one strand of what you're stitching and uh, it'll give a really nice sparkle to your, to your project. It's really pretty to use. Then the other helpful tools are a uh, little tiny pair of pliers. Um, this is ha handy to have if you're 
needle gets stuck. I find that sometimes if I've got quite a lot of stitching done in the back and I have to run my thread through a patch of stitching to lock it down. And sometimes the, th the needle will get stuck. So I use my little tiny pliers just to grab it and pull it through. Very handy to have. And in the same way, if you need to push without poking your finger, you can use a little rubber thimble like this. You can also get little leather ones, even little stick-on ones. That just helps to get a better grip on the needle for pulling and protects your finger if you're pushing and it's poking you. Another thing that I find handy are, is a little magnifying glass to keep uh, close to my stitching. That's especially if you're using a very fine fabric. Sometimes the um, you can't quite see, I can't quite see, even with my glasses on. If I finished a stitch, if it just looks weird, if I just if I missed the hole, what what did I what did I do wrong if a stitch looks weird? So with the handy magnifying glass, I can just have a really good look and see what what's why is it looking odd. Sometimes I just forgot to cross it, so uh, it's really a good thing to keep close. Uh, tape measure is always handy for when you're uh, figuring out your fabric. This cross stitch gauge is really a useful tool. It is marked, as you can see, 11, 14, 16, 18 on these little slots. And you just line up uh, the fabric holes with the little marks, like on a ruler. And the one that fits exactly is the count that it is. So that's really helpful for figuring out what count your fabric is. Or you can just go ahead and count how many threads in an exactly one inch of fabric, and that's your count. So this is just a little quick tool. There's also these uh, little embroidery scissors. This is for taking out mistakes and you will make mistakes. Uh, if you, you're mis you find that you've made a mistake way back and there's other stitches around it, it's difficult to just unpick the stitches, which I prefer to do. If I have to cut the threads, I do it very carefully with these and they can get right underneath the stitch and just snip. And that's pretty much what I use them for. I don't like using them just for cutting my regular threads. I'm always afraid I'm gonna poke this right into the fabric, make a hole. It can be fixed, but let's not do that. And that's why I like just the regular little, little scissors. And when you've got all your stuff together and you have it all assembled, you can put it all into a little project bag. So this little bag is, this is going to be a new item in our shop soon. We haven't got them listed yet, but we will. This one has a little plastic pocket in the front, so you can put a picture in the front of your project, and then you'll know what it is without having to open it. So inside here, you can put your pattern, your floss, your fabric, your needles are on your needle minder, and everything is all together and ready to just pick up and go and sit outside in the sun and stitch or in your favorite chair and turn the TV on or however it is you like to do your stitching. So that's uh, all, that's basically most, not all, but most of the accessories that you might like to have for your stitching project. I'm sure that there will be lots of other things that you could collect uh, some people will say, well, this is essential, that's essential, this is not necessary, and they're right too, because everybody's stitches in a different way. You don't all have to do it the same way. It's a very personal thing, and you can choose what's essential to you and what's optional to you, and make it your own. Make your pattern your own, make your stitching your own, and it's your hobby. Enjoy it how you like it. That's, this is uh, all the uh, tools and equipment that you will need for your first project. So stay tuned for our next video where we will be introducing uh, the ins and outs of your pattern and how to read it and uh, how to understand what the information is that's on there. So but we'll look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for joining us at Happy Stitching from Magic Hour Cross Stitch Supplies. We'll see you there.